So we had just finished example six. We'd done our right-hand solenoid rule. And now we come to the toughest one. It's called the right-hand motor rule. And this is why you can't bring magnets near electronic devices. Here it is. As it turns out, if you have a moving charge, it will get deflected by a magnetic field. The magnetic field will exert a force on it. And the easiest way to get moving charges is to contain them in a wire. In fact, we call that current, Leslie. So here we have a battery right there. And we have a wire carrying current. Based on that battery, which way is the current in this wire, left or right? Which way is the current in this wire, to the left or to the right? To the right. And then here's an external magnetic field. So this is not the magnetic field generated by the wire itself. This wire has been humming along nicely, but then there's an external magnetic field. Which way is this magnetic field? What does that symbol mean? Do you remember? Okay, out of the page. As it turns out, this magnetic field will exert a force on the moving charges within the wire. And I'll show you. Should have had this open already. I think I did, and I closed it accidentally. Okay. So this is from MIT. And here's the setup. We have a 12 volt battery. We have an on off switch, a long wire, and a strong magnet. So what we have right now is a wire and an external magnetic field. Now right now they haven't turned on the current yet. So right now, there are no moving charges. Right now, there is no force. Watch what happens when we turn on the current. Okay, Very noticeable. Oh, and if we reverse the current, so which way was the force this time? What direction? Which way did the wire jump? Up. What do you think would happen if we reverse the current? Which way would the force be? Let's find out. Oh, yeah. In fact, enough to cause the whole thing to collapse. The real question is this. How the heck can I figure out the direction of the current? This is the toughest right-hand rule. So here we have a current moving to the right. I'd like all of you to pick your papers up so they're 90 degrees vertical so that they basically match my screen behind me. Yes, we're doing this lesson now. Point your right thumb in the direction of the current, like this. Which way is the magnetic field? What do those dots mean? Which way is the external magnetic field? What do those dots mean? Which way is the external? You guys answered this 30 seconds ago. OK, out of the page. Extend your fingers so they're pointing out of the page. Now, you're going to have to bend your hand crooked like this a little bit. Sorry. Okay. Your palm points in the direction of the force. This wire would get forced down the page. Now, honestly, what I would do to do this particular diagram is probably just do that a little easier. We'll see. So here's what it says. It's called the right-hand motor rule. It's called the right-hand motor rule because this is also what explains how an electric motor will work. You point your thumb in the direction of the conventional current. You extend your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Your palm pushes in the direction of the net force. So in the above example, what would the net force be? Down the page. Can you look? So you have your math binder here? OK. Do you know where it might be, or do you need the lesson again? You want a copy of the lesson? Or no? Yes? OK. Sorry for those of you at home. Continue. So let's look at example seven. 
This is my really quick sketch. I don't do these very artistically, sorry. So here we have the current going which way? Into the page, right? Which way is the external magnetic field, the big magnet like we saw in the video? What direction? To the left? Okay, so you ready? Which way would this wire will experience a force? Which way? Point your thumb into the page. Now, I started to go like this. I started to try and bend my, fing my fingers, extend your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. And then let's say I got clever and I said, why don't I just put it here? It's way easier to be flexible. You may find it easier to move your hand across your body. Trust me. Thumb into the page. Fingers this way. Which way is my palm pointing with respect to the page? Up the page. This wire would get deflected up the page. I'm going to stand up for the next couple because I could see a few of you. I was being screened by my tablet because I'm recording less and I'm trying to get it to pick up my voice, but such as life will be okay. Um, can you get out the right hand rule questions sheet that I also handed out last day? Okay. And you want to find question number two. Now, question number two, the number two appears on the first half page, but the question itself is oh, right here, this one. All right. Here is an example of the right-hand motor rule. We have a current. Which way is the current going? Now, if you're finding this tough, I'm going to stand up and do it on the screen. You may find it easier to tilt your paper 90 degrees so it's at the same alignment as the screen. I'm going to stand up. Which way is the current going? Up the page. Which way is the external magnetic field? Extend my fingers that way. Which way is my palm pointing? What's the correct answer? Is the answer A, B, C, or D? C. Into the page. Which way is your palm? No, no, don't. No, no, no. Okay, Calvin, you did this. You went, and then you turned your hand totally different. Paper up. Right? This, yes. This, yes. Which way is my palm pointing? Into the page. Uh, by the way, some people do this like a gun. Some people point thumb, point finger, and then they extend this finger. I can't extend my middle finger in the direction of the, first of all, I'm flipping you the bird. I don't want to do that accidentally. But honestly, I can't, I can't bend this the right, my, I got this thing. My fingers are kind of double jointed or whatever. So I go boom, boom, palm. You will see some textbooks go boom, boom, and then point this finger that way. I just can't do it. Uh, what do we say? Into the page, right? Example three, a little tougher now. Here we have a proton moving. A proton moving, that's actually the same as a current. It's just not in a wire, but it is a moving charge. Which way is this charge moving? And this is where it gets tough because, Laura Lee, now we have a three-dimensional diagram on a flat surface. So we really have to use our Sesame Street imagination. First thing, which way is the magnetic field? See the two magnets? We're going to have to add the magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines always point from what to what. Do you remember? So can you draw those in? There's your magnetic field lines. And let's see which way this proton will get deflected. I point my thumb in the direction that the current is going, kind of like that, sort of. My fingers in the direction of the magnetic field is the answer A, B, C, or D. Which way is my palm point? I think towards the bottom of the page. It's really tough with the three-dimensional diagrams. I almost prefer a straight-on flat 2D diagram, but I'm sure somebody paid for the graphics and was very, very happy. Uh, let me see if I got a couple more I want to do. I want to leave you guys some to practice. Find number 11. Number 11 got chopped partly in half, so find the complete number 11, which is right above the number 12. Okay. Which way is the positive charge, the conventional current? Which way is it moving? Point your thumb to the right. This time I'm not lifting my hands up at all. You're going to try and do it yourself. Which way is that magnetic field? What, is those, what do those X's mean? 
Yeah, now they told you into the page. They usually won't. It does say into the page. So extend your fingers into the page. Down at your own piece of paper there. Thumb down. Thumb to the... Leslie, which way is the current? Point your thumb to the right. Which way is the net? Keep your thumb pointing to the right. No, to the right. Look at your piece of... That's to the right. You're going like this. I think to the right, kiddo, is that on my... Okay. Extend your fingers out. Point them into the page. You have to be flexible a little bit. A bit more flexible. Which way is your palm pointing? Which is the correct answer here? A, B, C, or D? See? Okay. 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 Pardon me? You asked a good question. It's important to ask. You've heard me say this, Amrit. Extend your fingers. No bending. Extend your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So it's point, point, palm. Or point, point, palm. Point, point, palm. None of this. If you're going like this, uh-uh. Back to our notes, please. Example eight. Example eight. This diagram, they love to give you this diagram. What's moving to the right this time? An electron. The right-hand rule does not work for electrons. It works for protons. Oh, an electron moving to the right, what would that be the same as a proton moving to the... So if they give you an electron, point your thumb in the opposite direction. And it'll often be an electron because those are the charges that are usually moving. So I'm going to point my thumb to the left. Which way is my magnetic field? What do those X's mean? Into the page. So if you're using my screen as your frame of reference, I think the force is down the page. Or if you were doing it, looking at your piece of paper, you would have gone left into the piece of paper, down the page. Right? So we've seen that there is a force on moving charges in a B field. By the way, what's a B field? What's a capital B an abbreviation for? Magnetic field. We know how to find the direction. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. How do we calculate the magnitude? The magnetic force on a moving charge is equal to three things effective. Q, V, B. It's affected by how big the charge is, Q, how fast it's moving, B, or how, and how strong the magnetic field is, B. Ah, but my right-hand rule for it to work, everything has to be perpendicular. So I'm going to add a little perpendicular, perpendicular. This formula is on your formula sheet, but they don't put the perpendiculars in there. What if they're not perpendicular? Right? QVB, F equals, in fact, I think it's the first one on this, on the sheet, right? QVB. That works out to Newtons, believe it or not. What? Coulombs times meters per second times Teslas works out to, yeah, it does. We haven't really defined what a Tesla is, but it actually has a, it's, it's, it's a unit as well. We talked about a Tesla last class. Sometimes... Kelvin, the charges don't move at 90 degrees to the magnetic field, in which case you find a component. And almost always the component is sine. In fact, you're going to notice, if you turn the page, that actually next year, those of you that go to, go to university, you're going to learn the equation as QVB sine theta. Oh, who's in math 12? If theta is 90 degrees, if they're perpendicular, what's the sine of 90 degrees? Do you remember? 1, and you just get QVB. In other words, our original formula actually has an invisible sine of 90 next to it. Oh, what if theta is 0 degrees? What if they're parallel? 
What was the sign of zero degrees? Kelvin. Are you know you, I thought you said it. Oh, I thought you heard, thought I heard you say it. I'm sorry. Zero. What we what Michael Faraday and Ampere and other mathematicians found, other physicists found, was what deflects charges is when it cuts across magnetic field lines. If it goes parallel to magnetic field lines, it won't get deflected. So we're going to write this. If it's parallel, no force. And they love to do that as a trick question, Alex. Every second or third provincial, and I think somewhere on your test, you'll see me give you an electron trundling along parallel to a magnetic field, and I'll say, what's the angle of, the, what's the deflection, what's the direction? None. None. Faraday showed that actually it needs to cross magnetic field lines for it to get deflected. In fact, the maximum force is experienced when it's perpendicular. This is what they're doing at the Large Hadron Collider. At the Large Hadron Collider, the way they collide particles, the way they aim them towards each other, they have big, big, huge, huge, huge magnets. They get the charges going very fast, and then they deflect them into each other. This is the physics. So, example nine. A proton moving at 1.7 times 10 to the 6th meters per second enters a 0.15 Tesla magnetic field at right angles, so it is perpendicular. Yay! What's the net force on the proton? So a proton being deflected by a magnetic field, the force is QVB. What's the charge on a proton? What's the charge on a proton? Victoria. One point, good old 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. V is the velocity. The velocity here, it says, is 1.7 times 10 to the 6. And the magnetic field is pretty big, 0.15 teslas. Remember we said 50 teslas is huge. What force will this proton experience? Get your calculators out, crunch the numbers. Sophie, what'd you get? Times 10 to the 4.08 times 10 to the negative 14. Is that right? Yep, yeah, okay. Newtons. Now that seems really small. And the negative 14 seems very small. But the second part asks, what's the acceleration? If I know the force on an object, how can I find the acceleration? Oh yeah. Acceleration is always force divided by mass. So if I take this 4.08 times 10 to the negative 14 and I divide by the mass of a proton, which I don't know, it's 1.67 but I can never remember the times 10 to the negative 27. How much is this proton being accelerated by? Uh, and I think the answer is, holy smokes, really big. Kim, 2.4 times 10 to the 13th, is that right? Meters per second squared. Uh, that means if it was able to accelerate for a whole second, it would be going faster than light. It won't be able to accelerate for a whole second. Otherwise, we'd be violating relativity. What's the force on a moving charge? QVB. QVB. And you don't realize yet just how profound that is. This is the beginnings of how a generator works. Just to show you that you can deflect charges. If you take an old TV screen, and don't do this yourself because it'll wreck the TV screen, but if you take an old style TV screen and you bring a magnet to it, because remember we said those are electrons hitting the screen when we talked about the cathode ray tubes. If you bring a magnet to a TV screen, it should get deflected. Let's see. 
don't do this at home. I don't want angry phone calls from your mom or dad that you've wrecked their plasma. Or whatever. Okay? But it's very noticeable. Bring a magnet near a TV screen. Okay? It's deflecting the electrons. So don't take my word for it. There it is. Not good, though, for the way they've set up the image. I wouldn't want to do this over and over. I'm fairly certain you would do permanent damage. But if you see an old, like, $5 TV screen at a garage sale, buy it, try it. <clears throat> Very nice. MIT can afford direct TVs. Sadly, I cannot. So what do you need to remember? Right hand rule, QVB. What's your homework? From the right hand rules questions handout, okay, this thing, I would like you to try, please, the following questions. Number four, five, seven, eleven. I think we already did eleven. Did we? Okay. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I think we already did fourteen. So 12, 13, 14, 16, 19, 19, and that's it for now. Those are all right-hand rule direction questions.